Well, good morning. Good morning. It turned out to be a really beautiful day now. But I, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of rain is not so bad in the morning. You at least get a shower, and you smell pretty good when you come to church. So, that's okay. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians today, and the title today is Tuck Your Shoes Under Your Bed. And uh, before we get going, let's uh, open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the awesome God that you are. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to this evil world to save us from it. That he died on the cross for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again. And through simple faith alone, we can have eternal life and spend eternity with you. Father, we just think about the car wash the other day and the gospel that went forth and everybody who's participated in that and everyone who's praying for that, Father. We, we know it takes every member of the body of Christ to fulfill your will, that you want all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of your knowledge of the word, rightly divided. Father, we just uh, look forward to our time in your word and let the spirit be, uh, just teach us through your word, Father. And uh, not just to be head knowledge, but just to take what we learn and to, and to leave these doors from this building and to tell others about your great love for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said, we're in Ephesians 3 today, and the title is Tuck Your Shoes Under Your Bed. And I picked that title because uh, everyone kind of knows this one uh, famous actor. His name's Denzel Washington, and he did a, uh, went to a college graduation, and his last words to a, bunch of, a body of students uh, was this. He addressed a, a body of uh, college students, and he told them, when you go to bed, from now, from now on, when you leave here, when you go to bed at your home, Tuck your shoes underneath your bed. And as you start your morning off, when you wake up, get on your knees to get those shoes. But when you're on your knees at that point, when you're on your knees, take that time to thank the Lord for your day. Take that time to thank the Lord for your day and ask for the strength to get through that day with Him by your side. You know, Be strong in the Lord and what? In the power of His might. It's exactly what the Apostle Paul here in Ephesians 3 tells us, that he, he bows his knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and read it together. Ephesians 3, verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do it exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Apostle Paul gave some information that he is the dispenser of the dispensation of the grace of God that was revealed by, to him from the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And his ultimate goal is to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery. His, and, and he says that do not, before that in verse 13, he says, don't, you know, don't faint at the, my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Don't, don't, don't be troubled with some of the persecutions, because Paul went through, some, went through some serious persecution. Everywhere the guy went, he was being persecuted. Folks, we, we fight a spiritual warfare, do we not? And it doesn't matter where you're at in your life, Satan doesn't want the message of God's grace to be advanced. He doesn't want it to be shared. He wants to create confusion. Well, Paul here says that what he does for what he was telling the Ephesus the, the people, the Christians, the, the church of Ephesus, what he was telling these saints, and he's telling you and I is that he bows his knees. He's saying, I'm praying for you. For I'm praying unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's how we are to start our day. God 
desires for us to commune with Him. And so let's start our day with prayer. The Apostle Paul. When you read his epistles, Romans through Philemon, 13 epistles that he's written for you and I today, for the body of Christ, we see the example of prayer time and time again. He prays for his brother. He prays for the lost. He prays, he, asks, he even asks you to pray for boldness that he can proclaim the grace, the truth of God's word. He pray. He wants us to pray. God desires for us to seek Him by faith. Did you know that? Let's turn to Romans here. Romans, the book of Romans, to your left. Romans chapter 4. What a tremendous privilege that you and I have as members of the body of Christ, as born again believers, as soon as you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you trust in the finished work of that cross, a tremendous privilege is to know that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Romans 5, 1, verse 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not what we did, it's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. It's by accepting Him, by faith alone. For by grace are we saved through what? Faith. Not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. Yesterday we did a free car wash and the gospel was presented People were driving by, and Steve and Cheryl, and um, oh, I've, who else was there? Chris was out there. He had some kids out there. I only had my coffee. I was waving. No. Um, we were saying, come on in, free car wash. And a Napa guy pulls on all along. Hey, don't worry. My boss is going to get, he's going to do a $50 donation. And Cheryl said, no, we're not accepting anything. Salvation is free. It's the gift. People have a hard time understanding that. In the real world, we understand that people love free. You offer free on the television, people are like, whoa, here we go. But in the spiritual realm, people are like, no, it can't be free. That's God's love for you and I. He says that if you've accepted it, it's by faith alone we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is an amazing part. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, and it's wherein we stand. We stand in God's grace upon salvation. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. But we have access by faith. And what he's saying is that God wants to have communion with you. You have access as a child of God. You stand in it. So rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And that is an amazing truth for you and I as believers, born again believers, as members of the body of Christ, that we can come boldly to his throne anytime, any second of the day and commune with him. We have access by faith. He diligently seeks. If we diligently, he wants us to desire. He wants that desire for us to seek him by faith, by faith alone. And so, in just a few verses here, go back to Ephesians 3. We're going to be flipping over to 1 Timothy 2. Hold your place in Ephesians 3 and go to 1 Timothy 2. But, but there's a tremendous amount of verses here that Paul emphasizes that God wants to commune with He wants us to commune with Him. He wants us to seek Him by faith. He wants us to cast our... Everything upon him. He wants to know every. He wants us to talk to him. So go to 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2, if you're there. And everybody knows the verse of Scripture here. And it's a, it's a verse of Scripture I like to point out is that the first thing it says, I exhort therefore that, what's the next three words? First of all, what's that mean? It means first. Before you get stressed out, turn you. Before you turn on Fox News, CNN, NBC, I don't care what floats your boat. The fact is that he does, I don't, don't go to the world. First of all, I want you to do something. First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? Oh, man. Not just the people you like, by the way. And then he, gets, he puts a little bit more advanced information for you and I. Verse 2. Who else is it for? For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. What are we to be doing? Praying. First of all, praying for our leaders. 
praying for our local government, our federal government. I don't care if you don't like the sitting president. I don't care if you don't like the sitting president 20 years ago or six years ago, or four years ago. We're to be praying for them. We're to be praying for all of them. And for such a time as this, maybe God raises a person like Esther up for such a time as this. We need men and women in our higher authority to make godly decisions, not just so we can pad our pockets, not just so we, we, we like the tax break, or whatever the case is, whatever you want. The, fact, the purpose is so we could, that, that, they, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in what? All godliness and honesty. We are ambassadors for Christ, and that is our first and priority. We all have a calling when you accept Christ as your Savior, and that calling is to preach Jesus Christ. It's to preach the cross. Because there's a dying world out there, there's dying individuals out there who are going to hell for all eternity. And without the body of Christ, the light, the true light, Christ in us, the hope of glory shining... The world is going to stay lost. And so Paul said, you, you need to pray for this, first of all. So we need to start our day with prayer. Pray for everybody, even the, the ones that you just get all somewhat fed up with. Why are they making decisions like that? doesn't matter. Pray for them. Pray for their salvation. So we can live... Lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. And then the, main, the other passage of Scripture here, go to Philippians 4 here. Everybody knows this passage. These are well-common passages here. I mean, sometimes we read them so quick and we just, we forget them. Our desire is what we learn in this church here is to recharge our batteries and to leave this wall, these walls, these doors, and what God is teaching us today through His Word, apply it. His word is very applicable. We can apply it to our lives. Philippians 4, verse 4. I love this verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say what? Rejoice. It's not just a kid's song. It's not just when kids get up here and sing the song. It says, I can rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That's the good times and the bad times. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He says, let it all out. Be careful for nothing. Don't choke God out. He wants to, he wants to communion with you, that, that fellowship with him. The personal relationship with your, our Savior. He, he says, tell me. Not, and, and, and again, sometimes we, uh, <laughs> we, we think, oh, God, it's too much. I, I don't want to bother you with it. He says everything. Don't choke him out. You know, and the, and the thing is, when we read these passages here, and we're, and we're, we're saying, let's start our day with prayer. But the question I have for all of us, myself, as well, is are we teaching our children that they can pray? Are we teaching the ch our children that they can pray? Are we encouraging them that they can talk to God? That's important to know, because if God's Word is telling you and I, host it's also for them too. But as parents, and we have parents here, and we have grandparents, you play a very important role. You're not getting out of this one. And great, 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 whatever grandparents... You, you can, what an influence that you can have on a child's life. We have Bible school coming up. Huge influence that we can have upon children. And let me tell you, kids remember everything. Ask Blake. He'll tell you. Dad, you forgot ice cream the other night. He remembers it all. You know, and it's just starting a routine. You know, every night when Liz and I put the kids to bed, we have a routine. And the kids like back rubs. They, they Mom, rub my back. Rub my back. I don't ever get a back rub. <laughs> but they, they like rubbing the backs. But you know what we do then? We pray. We pray with them. And then there's some occasions where I'm saying, Aaron, practice what you preach. 
You get down right beside them and ask them, have you prayed today? Do you know you can talk to God? Do you know you can, have, God wants a fellowship, he, he wants that communion with you, that you, you can have a personal relationship, you can tell them him anything. He wants that for them. So I encourage us all, let's start our day with prayer. You know, the, the, the book of Psalms here, it says, God, hear my cry. Psalm 61, verse 1 and 2. David's pouring out for you. God, hear my cry. Pay attention to my prayer. From the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God wants to hear our hearts. He wants to have that fellowship. Don't let anything out. Don't choke him out. Prayer is important and it's communion with God. So before we go to bed, let's tuck our shoes under our bed. Because that way when we, we all wake up, we're already down there. You're kneeling down. Give thanks to the Lord and ask for his strength and, to, and strength for your day. Strength for your family. Pray for our families. Pray for each other as members of the body of Christ. Ephesians, Ephesians 6.18 tells us that we're to be praying for each other, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. The body is how many members? Many. But how, what's, what, is it one body or two? It's one. Praying for all. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us has something to give. We're all part of something. You, you have a purpose. You're part of God's plan. His will. And God wants you to desire. He wants you to, to walk in newness of life. And a tremendous series that Pastor Stewart's going to be preaching upon here soon is letting the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. It's tremendous. Pay attention to that. So we need to kneel down, thank the Lord, ask for his strength to your day, your family, and other members of the body of Christ. It's exactly what the Apostle Paul here is, is praying for these folks. He says, I bow my knees, Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. His whole creation, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The Apostle Paul prays for you and I. He prays for strength for us. He prays for strength. And so we are to be praying also that the power that Christ in us, the hope of glory, that power, the power of the resurrection, that we should be praying for this power in our lives. So we need to be praying. Let's pray for his power for in our lives. I blame that on Blake, by the way. I didn't put that up far enough for you. I mean, I blame my children all the time. That's fine. He gets me back, though. Don't worry. But let's, we need to be praying. We, let's pray for his power for in our lives. Verse 16 tells us that. Paul prays that we would be strengthened by the inner man. And listen, take notice of this verse. I love when you read the word of God. It takes you out of it. But we want to put us, you know, we, we want to be the, no, it's my strength. It has nothing to do with you and I, not our strength. Doesn't matter how long you go to the gym, how much iron you pump, how far you run. It's nothing. It's, it's nothing. It says nothing about our strength. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory, his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Paul here is praying for strength. We can't come up with our own. It's God's strength. It's the spirit in the inner man. A strength that is solely dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if your phone battery dies, can you just pick up any charger in the world and charge that thing? No, you need the right charger. Do you not? You need the right charger. You need, do you grab some other phone cord to charge? It just won't do it. You need the right source to charge that baby up. Well, what Paul is praying for you and I is that we are strengthened by his spirit. That we are fully relying on the Spirit to lead us in our daily life. We fight a spiritual warfare just two chapters over. I quoted the verse earlier, Ephesians 6.10. It starts it off. Before you put, the, put, before you put the whole armor of God on, he says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, not our might. 
We are to be plugging into spiritual things. We are to be plugging into spiritual things. We are to feed ourselves through the Word of God. Spiritual things. What's Romans 12, 1 and 2 tells us? I beseech ye therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And what's the next part? Be not conformed to what? This world. But be what? Transformed by the renewing. Of, what's the renewing of your mind part there? The word of God. It's the word of God. I have it up here for you. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. You want to know the will of God in your life? Read the Bible. Don't listen to what I say. Don't listen. I mean, you can't. I want you to. But, but the fact is, I will tell you, this is the most important thing. The word of God. Be a Berean, study it out. Take what you see to hear today and apply it to your life. Don't say, well, my pastor or this guy said this about the word. What does the Bible say? If you're plugging into other books from a library, and I'm not saying there's other books out there, by the way, that are good. But if it's not coming from the word of God, it's, you're not really renewing your mind. It's, you, you compare spiritual things with what? Spiritual things. Word of God. What Paul is saying here is that you want to be transformed. You read the Word of God. It's the Word of God that you apply to your life. It's the Word of God that you charge up to as a believer, as a born again Christian, as a member of the body of Christ. And God desires for us to study His Word. 2 Timothy 2 15. We hold truth to that as a grace believer. We're to study the Word, rightly divided. Not to be ashamed, right? It's the word of truth. That's why. You go out in the world, you're not going to find truth. You're going to have this study over here, or this study over there. This person said this, this person. It, what's truth? It's the word. Paul emphasizes that. And we as believers need to remember that we are to plug into this spiritual thing and feed ourselves. And there are tons of commentaries out there. We have some books back there. There's books in there. They're great com, but they're men. They're not God. These are his words. And we're to plug into that spiritual food. And he prays that for us. He wants us to, he wants us to, that you would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And we know how to. We reach it by the word of God feeds us. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It reads you. Did you know that? The word of God reads you. Hebrews. Go to Hebrews here real quick. Hebrews chapter 4. This is the living word we're reading. Hebrews 4.12, if you're there, read it with me. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is the end is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God sees all. When you read the word of God, it sees what you need at that point, And it just divides you. It's like butter. It reads us. It's the living word. He, God gives you what you need today is through his word. Everybody is at a different point in their life spiritually. Everybody walks in these doors is not perfect. The only perfect man on earth ever to live was who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for that. He's the only one to walk on water. So don't we all walk in through this church and say, oh, we walk on water. No, you're not. You're walking on a floor. Beautiful building, by the way. But the fact is that when we come into this, we should be ready to be just drenched with the word of God. And the word of God working in our life. And then applying that in the real world. The world outside of these walls. He wants that for you and I. So we need to plug into those spiritual things. The Word of God reads you. So don't ever say, I can't understand the Word of God. you got the Spirit of God in you. 
When you are saved, you have the Spirit of God in you. He dwells in you. And that Spirit teaches you His Word. It reads you. And you're saying, well, I keep reading, I keep reading, and I just keep coming up with this. Thing. God, I just, I just, it's, some, it's like the same thing. Well, maybe God's trying to tell you something that we have to learn from. He wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. So let's get to it. Let's plug into spiritual things. Go back to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, verse 17. He also tells us here that Paul says, I I'm praying this for you guys. I want you, I'm, I'm praying for you that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. He wants us to let Christ dwell in our hearts by faith, trusting Him. That's what that means. And that word dwell, if you look up that word dwell, it literally means to make yourself at home. It's literally saying, Lord, take my whole heart, my life. And it's like literally someone coming to your house. You know, when we were back in Wisconsin, we lived in a neighborhood, and we didn't know there was a lot of children there. Not that I don't like children, but they literally came over to our house and made themselves at home. <laughs> Open the fridge, they start using our bathroom, they open the, oh my goodness, there's a kid in the bathroom. What in the world? Liz, where does kids go? I don't know. No. Kids, they, they just make yourself. Well, God's saying, I want you to, I, I, you, need, you need to have the Lord dwell in your hearts. Don't, don't act like, uh, Lord, you can't, you can't have this. You can't have my job. That's secular. You can't have that job. No, we've got separation from state. and You can't do that. No, no, God's, I want, I want to dwell. We need to allow the Lord to dwell in our hearts. Make yourself at home, Lord. We are to allow the Lord Jesus Christ in all of our bedrooms, in our house, even the messed up drawers, the sock drawer, yes. <laughs> if we want the Lord to fix us or to help us, we need to let him in our whole house, trusting him and looking to him with every single decision. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. The fact is, is when you accepted Christ as your Savior, as your personal Savior, said the verse 17 tells us there, it states that we are rooted and grounded in love. That you're wrapped up in Christ's righteousness. It's who you are, your identity. You're in the beloved, you're a new creature. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. What a tremendous thing to know. Your new nature is rooted. It's thoroughly grounded. So if you're a new man, walk by faith and not by sight. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord in His strength. You know, the Lord wants to be a part of our daily walk. He wants to be a part of it. Let Him dwell in our hearts. And we can experience his great love. We can experience his great love. He lives in you and I. Galatians 2.20. Everyone knows it. But we always forget the second part of that verse. For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But what? We like that part, don't we? What's the next part? For the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. God desires for us to walk in newness of life. Do not butcher the word of God. Take the whole verse. The whole thing. God says, I want you to walk this way. Christ lives in us. Paul says, I'm praying that you, that you allow the word of that." Allow the Lord, that Christ, dwell in your hearts by faith because you're rooted and grounded in love. Allow it. And he wants, you to, he wants you to know. God wants us to know his love. You know that? He wants us to know that love. Verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. God desires he desires to communicate his love, his holiness, his truth, and all the other attributes. He desires that for us. 
He desires that for our lives in a practical sense, in our daily walk with him. He desires that for you and I. And Paul desired that too as well. That's why we, you're already in Ephesians. Go to Philippians 4 here. We already were there. But in Philippians 4, we read verses 4 to 7. But verse 8 and 9 is a tremendous verse for you and I. Because I call it the challenge. Paul is our apostle as members of the body of Christ. We follow Paul as who? He's followed who? Christ. He's the messenger. We don't worship him. We worship God. We worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul is the messenger today. But he tells us something here in verse 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. What's that word? Do. That's our job. He's done the hard work, folks. He, he's already he's paid the price for our sins. Paul says, do. And I love the ne last, next couple of words here. And the God of peace shall be what? With you. The amazing thing is our practical sanctification, our walk in life. We're to apply the things that we learn through the word in our life. And the God of peace shall what? Be with you. That's knowing God. Walk by faith and not by sight. We are to be walking and newness of life. And God says, I, don't choke me out. Let me know how your life's going. Let me know how your walk's going. You had a rough day? Tell me. Be careful for nothing and everything by prayer and subject. With thanks to let your request be made known unto God. God desires to communicate his love, his holiness, his truth, and all the attributes of his goodness to our lives in a practical sense. You know, upon salvation, we were blessed with all spiritual blessing. Was it with some or with all? With all. We did nothing. It's amazing to live in a day of grace. It's amazing to know that salvation's free. We're blessed beyond, beyond belief. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But if you're already in, if you're in Philippians, Ephesians is right over the right over to the left, just where we were at. But the amazing thing is, is that he's going to keep blessing us. Ephesians 2, it tells us. We are, he has raised us up together, may us sit together in heaven, place in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, what's the ages to come? Eternity. That in the ages to come, he is going to display, to show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us. Through Christ Jesus. Wow. We did nothing for it. That's why we are to give honor and glory to him. When we sing praises to him, we are to be speaking songs and hymns and spiritual songs to him. Glorifying his name. Glorifying who he is. And what we have through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are to be walking in newness of life. Satan is blinded to the, the minds of the lost. And unless the light, what's the difference from light and darkness? That's a contrast, right? Yeah. If there's no light, and if you're walking around grumpy, holding a sign, huh, come to our car wash. Oh, wash your car. Is anybody going to see a difference? No. Say hi to someone one day. Open a door for someone one day. Say, Lord Jesus, bless you. They'll look at you kind of weird. But they may ask a question. What do you mean? Many opportunities yesterday to share the love of Christ. And even if they never walk through these doors, they remem people remember. They see that crazy guy on the sidewalk. 
But they see that pastor washing a car. They see that man washing a car. See the kids out there. See pictures. Man, they, they, they seem like good people. Then you run into them again in the store. God cares for them too. We're to be caring for each other. Caring for the lost. And even if from 10 to 2, think about this. From 10 to 2, if one person comes to know the Lord after all the sacrifice, the money that was put in, it was all worth it. Because that's an eternity. That's a soul saved. Angels in heaven are cheering. And so what I'm trying to get at is prayer is important. God wants communion with him. So before we all go to bed tonight, please tuck your shoes under your bed. And parents, don't get mad at your kids for why didn't you put your shoes at the front door. Get in the habit of prayer. When we wake up, kneel down, give thanks to the Lord, ask the Lord to, for strength for your day. And remember this, the next two verses here are very important. Do not shortchange God. Do not shortchange God. Let's read it together in verse 20 and 21. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church, church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I love verse 20. God is able to do far more than we can ask. He's able to do far more than we can think. The power inside of us he's talking about is the resurrection power. It's walking in the spirit, newness of life. We have the same power that God displayed as he raised Christ from the dead. Did you not know that? Live like it. It's the power that lives in us. It's this power that we sometimes, and sometimes a lot, shortchange God. We underestimate God. We serve a big God. Remember that. He is the creator of all things. We're part of his creations. In the beginning, who created the heaven and the earth? God. He did it. He is the creator of all. We serve a big God, so we need to start acting like it. We need to quit putting him in our pocket and let him work through us. And when he's working through us, let's just rejoice in the Lord, is what verse 21 is saying. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Next time we're singing hymns, and when we sing the next song coming up, let's sing it to the Lord because we have something to glorify him for. He saved us for all eternity. And you know something? Paul's heart was Philippians 3.10. And we don't have time to turn there. But he wanted to know him and the power of his resurrection. And not just the power of his resurrection, but also the sufferings. Prayer is important. It's communion with God. So before we go to bed, let's tuck our shoes below. And when we wake up, kneel down. Give thanks to the Lord. Ask the Lord to strengthen your day. And remember, don't shortchange God. Let Him dwell in your heart. Because He is able. And keep looking up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everyone who is listening on radio and television and, and Facebook Live. And we just thank you for everybody who is here today, Father. We thank you for Altoona Bible Church. And we just thank you for the ministry. Um, we thank you for Pastor Stewart and his wife, Nancy, and the ministry that uh, they have here. And we just uh, we, we think about all the ministries that are going on. And the purpose, Father, is that you desire that all men be.